As we get set for the holidays, people are going to be looking for a nice bottle of wine to share with family and friends. Wine Spectator is set to unveil the number one wine of the year. And joining us now to make the reveal, the magazine's executive editor, Tom Matthews. Good to have you back. Thank Welcome. You, you want Great to do to this here. first? Let's talk about it. Okay, well, let me give you a little context. Right. Wine Spectator reviewed more than 15,000 wines in 2019 in a blind tastings. So to pick the top 100, not so easy. We use a multivariable analysis. We take the quality, which is the score, the value, which is the price, availability, and what we call the X factor, what makes a wine exciting. So all this week, we've been counting down the top 10 on our website, winespectator.com. And today, exclusively with you guys, we're going to unveil the wine It's of the year. become a nice tradition, actually. Why don't you go ahead? Okay. The number one wine of 2019 is Chateau Leoville Barton, Saint Julien 2016. This is a red Bordeaux made mostly from Cabernet Sauvignon. It scored 97 points. It cost $98. And it is a beautiful bottle of classic red Bordeaux. What was the X factor? The X factor is the fact that this chateau has been in the same family since 1826. And uh, they're wonderful people. They're Irish, actually, the Barton family. They're now run by Anthony, who's 88, and his daughter Lillian. And they've always been very fair price. The average price for a 97-point wine at Wine Spectator this year, $475. This bottle, $98. So good value for Bordeaux. What would you say about the universe of candidates this year versus prior years? More diverse than ever. We have 44 wines, first-time appearance. We have 17 countries. We don't have any orange wines, Leslie, not this year, <laughs> but maybe next year because those are definitely coming on. But the classics are always classic. Is, um, is it getting harder to grow a good vintage? I mean, I wonder if things, I mean, climate, you know, variability for one thing, if that's becoming an issue. Climate change is definitely affecting grape growing regions all around the world. And of course, now California has a fire season. Uh, Sonoma had terrible fires in October. Fortunately, 92% of the grapes were already harvested, but it's definitely impacting how they grow the grapes and make the wines. Really? In terms of when the crush is or the... Uh, the planting season? Exactly. Earlier in Germany, for example, they're almost two weeks earlier than they were 20 years ago. Does that have a, is that impacting price or inventory? Pricing is impacted by trade wars. I don't know if you're aware, but the <laughs> government has just slapped 25% tariffs on wines from France, Spain, uh, Germany. Not to mention some whiskeys, right? And whiskey and Parmesan cheese for whatever reason. So would that wine be, you know, say $75 instead of $98? Well, not after it's wine of the year. <laughs> but this is already in the country, so uh, the, uh, the tariffs won't affect this one. In other words, are they able to kind of eat the cost of the additional tariffs? Are you seeing the wine consumers, that or The consumers are going to eat the cost. Prices are going to go up 10 or 20 percent for those wines affected. It may help the domestic uh, wine producers. Uh, um, how much does a price go up as a result of what you just revealed? Well, we'll see, but it, it definitely will take a bump. It will. Fortunately, 10, 20, 30 percent? I mean... It could even be more than that. It could. David, it could be. Yeah. But uh, this wine is going to last in the cellar for 10 or 20 or 30 years. So by that time, the wine prices will be probably in the millions, <laughs> and this will look like a great value. <laughs> Tom, you've, you come in every year and help us uh, unveil this. It's great to see you. Thank you so much. Congratulations, as always. Thank you so Get much. Get to work for on next me. year. All right. <laughs> Tom Matthews. Thank you.